Welcome back home, COP family. To prioritize your safety, please listen closely as we remind you of these health and safety protocols required by the Department of Health and the IATF. All COP campuses will be thoroughly disinfected before members are allowed to come in. Before entering the COP premises, always wear a face mask and a face shield. Please undergo temperature scanning. Use the disinfecting mats. While inside COP, use the sanitizing stations every 20 minutes. Take note of our social distancing markers around the campus. Always follow the signs and maintain the flow. Use the foot markers when queuing. Use the assigned stairs when going up or down. When finding your assigned seat or exiting the auditorium, please approach our friendly ushers and they will gladly assist you. Please remember that you can only sit on chairs with a red marker. A safety officer will always be present to assist you for any concerns regarding the mentioned protocols. We're doing our best to help keep you safe. So all you need to do is seek God and focus on His Word. Welcome back home, COP family. Wow, that feels good to say. We are back in live worship services and it's wonderful to be able to say, see you face to face. We have five weekend schedules. Saturday at 6 p.m., Sunday at 7.30 a.m., 10 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 3 p.m. We'll finally get to worship, pray, and learn the Word all together again in God's house. But how about the kids and seniors who can't attend services yet? Don't worry, lots of options are available. Everyday Jesus and Senior Moments to Remember are still available online. And our South Saturday drive-in service at 7.30 a.m. is a lot of fun and still available. And our services will still be on Facebook and YouTube. For more information and latest updates, keep checking our social media pages. COP family, let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's go to the house of the Lord. Welcome, COP family and guests. In compliance with government regulations, we ask for a few minutes of your time to answer the contact tracing form. You can choose from three easy ways to do it. Option one, scan the QR code using your smartphone camera or app. Once you are redirected to the digital form, fill in and submit. Option two, text us the following information. Service schedule, COP campus, seat number, and negative. If you have no exposure to COVID-19, send to 0998-586-9558. Option three, get a paper form from any usher, fill it in and drop it in the designated box. We're doing all we can to comply with government protocols so we can stay safe together. Thank you.
Welcome back home, COP family. Wow, that feels good to say. We are back in live worship services, and it's wonderful to be able to say, see you face to face. We have five weekend schedules. Saturday at 6 p.m., Sunday at 7.30 a.m., 10 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 3 p.m. We'll finally get to worship, pray, and learn the Word all together again in God's house. But how about the kids and seniors who can't attend services yet? Don't worry, lots of options are available. Everyday Jesus and Senior Moments to Remember are still available online. And our South Saturday drive-in service at 7.30 a.m. is a lot of fun and still available. And our services will still be on Facebook and YouTube. For more information and latest updates, keep checking our social media pages. COP family, let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's go to the house of the Lord. Welcome, COP family and guests. In compliance with government regulations, we ask for a few minutes of your time to answer the contact tracing form. You can choose from three easy ways to do it. Option one, scan the QR code using your smartphone camera or app. Once you are redirected to the digital form, fill in and submit. Option two, text us the following information. Service schedule, COP campus, seat number, and negative. If you have no exposure to COVID-19, send to 0998-586-9558. Option three, get a paper form from any usher, fill it in and drop it in the designated box. We're doing all we can to comply with government protocols so we can stay safe together. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Saturday night worship service. We are glad to see you in God's house. Hello to all of our campuses there in Maine, South, North, and East, and Bulacan, and Pampanga. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in God's house. Let's all stand up. We're going to be praying tonight for our government, and likewise, we need to add protection of our nation as the typhoon is coming in tomorrow. Amen? Amen. How do we pray, COP? Fervently and with joy. Let's lift our voices to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come into your wonderful presence, Lord God, tonight. Thank you so much, Lord, for bringing us into your place, into your house. Thank you so much, indeed, Father. That tonight, oh God, we are glad that we are in your house to be with your wonderful, beautiful presence, Lord. We are just so grateful, Father. Right now, Father, we lift up to you our government. We lift up to you our nation, oh God. Father, we thank Thank you so much, oh God, that you are in control of everything, Father. Thank you so much, oh God, that you are in control of even nature, Father. As Lord God, the typhoon is coming into our nation, Father, tomorrow. Thank you, Lord, that you are in control and that you will protect, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that you are refuge, our fortress, oh God, in the times of time, in the times of storm. Father, we lift up to our government, God. Thank you, Lord God, for the authority, Lord, that you have established, Father. You are the ones, God, who have instituted, Lord God, the leadership of our nation, Father, to govern us, O God. And Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for all the hard-working government employees, O God, during this time of quarantine, during this time of pandemic. Thank you, Lord God, that we have a government, that we have government employees, Father, who is serving your people, who is serving our nation, O God. Father, right now, we lift up to you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much, O God, that there will always be stability, Lord God, of our nation, the stability of our government, Lord God. When there is crisis, Father, thank you, Lord, that there will always be stability, O God. Even when the storm comes, O God, our leadership in our nation, Lord, will be stable, Father. We pray, God, for our president, Lord God, that you would just bless him, Lord, with good health, with strength, and wisdom, Father, as He makes decisions, as He leads, Father, into our nation in a time of crisis. God, we pray, Lord, that You will just give Him wisdom, and He will be walking in good health, Father. We pray, God, for the IATF and all the LTUs, Lord, all of our mayors, Father, who are governing, Lord, the different cities and municipalities, Father. Thank You, Lord God, for wisdom indeed that would flow from them and guidance, Lord, and even, Father, for our government employees, oh God, for their strength, even as they work in times of crisis, even there's coming a storm, Father, we thank you, Lord, for wisdom, that you would bless them, Lord. Father, we pray that your name be glorified as you bless our nation, Lord, with governing good, governing authorities, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that your name be glorified. Lord, as you bless the work of the hands, oh God, of our government, with employees, Lord, you will be glorified, Father. And even, Father, for our government, our nation, Lord God, remains stable in the midst of crisis, in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of the storm or typhoon, Father. We thank you so much, O God, that your name be glorified. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your protection, O God, for our nation, for your people. As the typhoon's coming in tomorrow, Father, we thank you, God, for your protection, O God, that you will take in control and we will not see damages, Lord. But, Father, we thank you, God, that you will bless the assets of your people and that your protection, O God, will flow. Even, O God, to the different provinces, different municipalities, Lord, cities that will be affected, Father, your protection, O God, will be there. And we are so grateful, Father God, that you are the God. You are the Lord. Even the virus, even the storm, Lord, will bow down to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much indeed, God, because you are good. You are our God. You are our protection. You are refuge. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is the light of this world, and the unfolding of his word gives light. Jesus is the Christ.
not a way, a truth, and one way of life. At COP, we know that like the apostles, we are to preach the gospel publicly and from house to house. It is a privilege to be in your homes sharing the gospel. At COP, we know a pastor is to teach the word of God, enabling us to live lives that please the Lord. At COP, we know we are to preach the gospel to the poor, bringing them to what Jesus called life and life more abundantly. At COP, we heal the sick in Jesus' name, and our God is with us even to the end of the age. At COP, we know that the message is the gospel. We love it, we live it, and we preach it. It is the good news, and it is the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. At COP, our eyes are on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We don't worship worship, we don't worship fellowship, we worship Jesus. At COP, we know that we have been called by God to be priests. We are to serve Him. We don't live in our own little world. We serve Him fervently until every lost person is found. We will build 200 churches across our land and across the world in the next 20 years. At COP, we know every member has been given the Great Commission, so we joyfully work while it is yet day, seeing people born again, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and learning to live for God. At COP, we know that we are to bear fruit and not to gather fruit. There is no shortage of people that need to hear the gospel. Our joy is to go to the harvest field and then bring the harvest field to the Lord. At COP, we know we are to fill His house with His praise. We praise the Lord. We praise Him for who He is and what He does. If it's not about Him, it's not praise. At COP, we know that the tithe is not about obedience to the law. It is before the law, during the law, and even Jesus taught tithing. It is our joy to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse to the Lord. At COP, we know prosperity is about trusting our Heavenly Father for everything we need. No fear of debt, no fear of poverty, no fear of people. Our Father is our provider. At COP, we know that Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father. That means that we are part of a great family of God across this world. When one part of that family needs help, it is our role freely give as we have freely received. At COP, we know God's grace abounds to us, teaching us to say no to sin and to work hard for Him.
house of the Lord. Hello to all of our campuses, our branches, and to everyone who's also in the courts parking lot of the Lord. We are so, so happy to get to have you with us this Saturday night. Now, please do make sure you help us out with our social distancing in your coming in, coming forward, and going out. Please also make sure you help us fill out those contact tracing forms so that we can follow government guidelines as well. Now let's all continue to worship our wonderful Lord.
much for me I cannot tell it all If I had 10,000 times It wouldn't be enough Oh, Dios na nagpapakali When you heal, you heal completely
Well, it's been an interesting year. So far. Volcanoes, COVID-19, and now a Cat 4 or 5 typhoon headed to Manila. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Sing that song one more time. Which one? The one we were just mm -hmm. singing? Mm -hmm. Okay. When the ocean rises with yourself <laughs> we've been learning how to join our hands together <laughs> father we come in a prayer of agreement Lord we just ask that all the sting of this thing that all the death of this thing be taken out of it and father in Jesus name we thank you that no loss of life no loss of property for any of your any of your people Lord you promise in your word that you would rebuke the devourer from the life of a tither. As your people have walked in faithfulness for you, Lord, I thank you that all of their assets, all of their home, everything shall be safe and secure. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, look around at everybody and say, you look wonderful tonight. Now, before you sit down, we want to welcome some people tonight. We don't have Papanga tied in yet, but we have Bulacan tied in. So can everybody just stand and welcome Bulacan and give them a big clap offering? <laughs> now again, these are all old time members of COP. Bulacan, thank you for your patience. We lost our facility in Bulacan that we were renting because it became a COVID center. And so we've gotten another place fixed up very quickly, but Bulacan and Pampanga be looking for a piece of property. After we finish Cavite, we want to start building our churches in Bulacan and Pampanga. Yeah. We want to get that land bought and those buildings built before the prices go up in Bulacan and Pampanga with the new airport going in. And everybody said, we're very excited. We may not be able to do crusades right now, but we can build churches in Jesus' name. Yeah. All right, you may be seated. Let me talk to you and all of you listening on Facebook and YouTube a little bit about these next few, this next week or next couple of weeks. Uh, tomorrow, we will have services at normal, 7.30, 10 o'clock, and 12.30. But we're doing something we don't normally do, and that's we're closing the 3 o'clock. Everybody say, no 3 o'clock. Now, the reason for that is not the storm. The reason for that is during COVID-19, uh, especially at East, now I think North is okay, but especially at East and Maine and South, transportation is very, very difficult on a normal day, not counting a typhoon coming day. So we're going to do services at 7.30, 10, and 12.30 at all of our, main, at all of our campuses, but then it's, we're going to cancel the 3 o'clock and tell everybody just to be home so that you don't get stuck someplace. And everybody said? Now, Next weekend, I want to ask that you help me. Next weekend, prayerfully today, we'll finish up Sword of the Spirit. Next weekend, I want to preach a sermon called Return to the Flame. Everybody say, Return to the Flame. And I really want you to work hard on getting all your Connect Group members, all the new people that got saved, all of your family members. I want you to really work hard on getting them in a service. Now, if people are not comfortable with the 30% capacity in 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock, well, they can do Friday night, they can do Saturday night, they can do 7.30, they can do 12.30, but let's get people in church. Be safe, be prudent, but let's be in church in Jesus' name. And then that's returning to the flame, and then the next weekend we're going to try to start getting back into 
semi-normal services. Uh, the Department of Health has given us new instructions. We can go back to two-hour services. I won't go back to two-hour services right away, all right? We're going to slowly phase things back in, uh, slowly be adding things back to the services, slowly be adding things back to the calendar, but we still want to be prudent. Now, choirs can again practice according to the last um, uh, Department of Health situation that we got, but choirs, there's going to be some pretty strict rules that the government has placed on us for choir practices. Uh, we had our first special number since COVID-19 in our drive-in service this morning at 7.30, uh, but we have, again, strict rules, no sharing of microphones, these things. And, and folks, I would just ask that you all be patient because we're trying to be very submissive and cooperative with the government. And everybody said... Now, I know in some nations the governments are using this to persecute churches, but that is not the case in our land. The government's doing everything they can to help us get church open again. I can't hear you. So, you know, a little cooperation on our part is, is all that they're asking for, and we can do that in Jesus' name. Amen? So, we, you know, as we do bad things, singers, we're going to ask that you be cooperative. Uh, dancers, you notice we only allow a couple here on the top level, none running around down below where sweat could go off on somebody. But we, we've got lots of little things that they have placed on us, and we really want to try to be cooperative with that. So please, everybody, be patient as we slowly start reopening. We do not want to go back like France or Spain or Belgium or Germany. Uh, I got an email from Marcus this week. They are under total lockdown in Germany again. Does anybody here want to return to total lockdown? No. So let's be cooperative. Face mask, wash our hands, shields. Let's do all the things that we're asked to do and move forward in Jesus' name. Remember, I've been preaching to cars all morning, honking at me. You got to make a little noise. <laughs> okay. Especially Saturday night. Because Saturday morning is the horn honking festival, all right? Would you open your Bibles, please, to the book of Lamentations, chapter 2? Lamentations, chapter 2. I was talking with a young man the other day, and he's been reading Lamentations. And he said, Pastor, it is so sad. I said, I know, but there are some real gems in there, and here's one of these gems. Now, we've been learning together that God is a God who restores. Everybody say, He is my restorer. We learn that he restores our comfort, which is our sense of relaxed in our soul. We'll get later on into he restores our soul completely. We've talked about he restores us to full health, not partial health. We've learned together now that he restores our fortunes. And we learn that as he restores our fortunes, he restores them like the streams in the Negev. This giant, you know, all of a sudden a desert begins to bloom like this. That is a desert in the Negev. But when the streams begin to flow, everything begins to bloom. And it's a suddenly... And so it will be in your life. As God restores twofold, there will be a, a, just a sudden doubling of blessings in your life as God restores everything that this COVID-19 has destroyed. But we said that there are some things that God asks of us. We learned that God asks of us that we pray for those who kicked us when we were down. There's no bitterness. There's no resentment left in our heart. Last week, we learned that God asks of us to reestablish relationships with people who have failed us in our difficult times. Now I want to go on from there and begin to learn that in order to restore fortunes, God requires a confrontation with the Word of God and true repentance. Everybody say, a confrontation with the Word and true repentance. Lamentations 2.14. Your prophets, he said, not my prophets. He said, these are your prophets. Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not exposed your iniquity to restore your fortunes. Notice, they have not exposed your iniquity, and the purpose of that is to restore your fortunes. But have seen for you oracles that are false and misleading. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this tonight, but I want you to notice, first of all, he said, your prophets. Everybody say, the people's prophets. These were not prophets that God sent. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 9. For it is a lie they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. So there are people that we choose to influence and to speak into our life, but God never sent them. 
There are people that God has sent into our life. There are men and women of God that God places in our lives. And these are the people that, that God expects us to listen to. But then there are these other, yeah, that come around. And he said, you, you chose them. Everybody say, we chose them. Paul says it like this in 2 Timothy 4, verse 3, English Standard Version. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears and will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. New International Version, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. New Living Translation, they will look for teachers to tell them whatever their itching ears wants to hear. So Paul said, Timothy, listen, in the last days, one of the things that you're going to find is not preachers gathering up people, but people gathering up preachers. Everybody say, people gathering up preachers. They, they pick and choose who they want to listen to, and they want to listen to whoever tells them what they want to hear. And so you find these false prophets working very hard at popularity, working very hard at being cool, because they want to be chosen. They want to be what? And God said, listen, th these are your prophets. They're not the men and women of God that I've sent into your life. There are, there are people that have postured for you, and they've, they've said things to you, and they've tried to make you feel good. He said, you know what? Because of those lies they prophesied to you, your fortunes have not been restored. Now, Paul tells us that the role of a pastor sometimes is not very popular. He tells young pastor Titus, this is a young pastor, he said, declare these things, and he's given them doctrines that they were to declare. He said, exhort and rebuke, exhort and what? Exhort and rebuke with all authority. He said, let no one disregard you. He said, don't let anybody just refuse to pay attention to you. In other words, Timothy or Titus, get in their face once in a while. You've got to get in their face sometimes and bring a word of rebuke. He says to young Timothy, 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with great pay, or with complete patience and teaching. He says again to young pastor Titus, Titus, he must hold firmly to the trustworthy word is taught so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also rebuke those who contradict it. Now, you keep looking at these words and you begin to see Paul was telling young Pastor Titus and young Pastor Timothy, your role is not to, to have everybody agree with you. Your role is, is not to get everybody to like you. Your role is to teach the Word of God. I didn't hear you. But he said, now listen, guys, in the last days, there's going to be a whole different spiritual atmosphere beginning to change. And this is where the your prophets come along. Now, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15, it says, The elder and the honored man is the head, and the prophet who teaches lies is the tail. Is the what? Now, please forgive the grossness of my illustration, the indelicateness of my illustration, but I am a dog person. How many people here love dogs? What comes out of the tail? The poo. It smells. It stinks. That's what lying prophets produce. If you want to look at their fruit, that's what they produce. He takes it a step farther. Jeremiah chapter 5, 31. He said, the prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule at their own direction. And my people love to have it so. Jeremiah 6, verse 13. Or look at, just look at verse 14. He said, these false prophets, they have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Verse 11 of chapter 8, they have healed the wound of my people lightly by saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. God said, listen, these, these false prophets come along, and they say a few nice words, and those, those few nice words that they say, heal the wound of my people lightly. Everybody say, band-aids. Now, you've got an eight-inch gash in your arm, but these guys will put a little band-aid on it. He said, they don't heal the wounds completely. They heal the wounds lightly. Now, beloved, how many of you want to see fortunes restored to your family? Would you raise your hands up high? Put your hands up high. Then notice what Lamentations says. He's very, very clear. He said, they have not exposed your iniquity to restore your fortunes. There are times that as a pastor we preach things, and it's not popular, and it's challenging people to live a holy life. 
It's confronting people with their sin. And the purpose of that confrontation is never to hurt people. The purpose of that confrontation is to restore the fortunes to their life. I didn't hear you. You, you see the sin in your life and you come to God and repent. And in that time of repentance, the blessings begin to flow again. I, I didn't hear you. So when you read your Bible and you're challenged, when you hear a sermon and you're challenged, don't get angry. Just say, you know what? God's always right and I need to change. Everybody say, God's always right and I need to change. It's in that humility of repentance. It's in that humility of confronting our wrong and repentance that fortunes are restored to our lives. God, God wants you to repent not to hurt you. God wants you to repent to bless you. All right, that's my offering thought and my communion thought. Would you stand with me, please? Would you take out your communion emblems? Now, we've been using these new type of communion emblems. <laughs> They're really expensive. But this is what we need to do so that we can have communion at this time. And everybody said? Now, I'll be blunt with you. We're, we're working on trying to import a machine and make our own so we can really cut our cost and we can make them a little nicer too. Um, but this is what we have for right now. And this is what we need to do for right now. So this is what we do for right now. And everybody said? We'll need to nothing. This bread? This bread. Represents his body. Represents his body. That was hung on a tree for me. That was hung on a tree for me. To take the curse of the law. To take the curse of the law. To redeem me. From the curse of poverty. From the curse of poverty. From the curse of family destruction. From the curse of failure. From the curse of failure. From the curse of the plague that sticks. From the curse of the plague that sticks. And that the blessings of Abraham. And the blessings of Abraham. And the covenants of promise. And the covenants of promise. Flow to my life. Flow to my life. I remember. What he did for me. What he did for me. Let us partake of the bread together. Ulita Nath in this cup represents his blood that washed away all my sin. And every day washes away all my sin. I am clean by the blood of Jesus. I remember what he's done for me. Let us partake of the cup together. Last week I shared with you how everything is fine with the church finances. God has been good to you and you have been faithful to God. Can you give the Lord a clap offering for that? Yeah. But let me just give you another little thing this week about the faithfulness of God's people. During the 10% between our drive-ins and our Fortress 91 and our services under 10%, 
We were averaging around 5,500 people in attendance every week here at COP. Last week, we began to come out of the, the COVID-19 a little bit more. We were up to 6,500. I don't know what this week will do with, you know, we had typhoons coming last week. We got another typhoon coming this week. But our people will be faithful. And so be thankful to God for faithful, for faithful church mates. And everybody said... As a pastor, I've been so proud of our people during all of this time, starting first with the drive-in services and now coming back into services live. Your patience, your faithfulness, you are just awesome. Would you give each other a Amen. clap offering? All right, that was my offering thought and my communion thought. When you're ready, come, bring your tithe and your seed before the Lord. Can I tell you one more story of your faithfulness? Never mind. Sweetheart, make sure I get this right. One of our choir members, Rumblon, one of our choir members got stuck. You tell the story. You know the story better than I do. Okay, it's um, an usher, and he is the husband of one of our choir members, and he has been in Rumblon getting people saved. He got stuck during COVID-19. So he just decided to start getting people saved and he started a connect group. And the connect group keeps growing and now they have a congregation of 70 people who are meeting like regular, regular, regular. And they just put up the video of the service and just follow along with the video of the service. And he's, um, there's a donated property already waiting for the church so he's just waiting for a pastor to come and take over and let it just boom from there so we'll be Go sending ushers. so we will be sending a pastor down to romblon so you know you just look at that and you go there's a usher who got stuck during covid 19 and decided to turn lemon into a lemonade and the next thing you know there's a new church in romblon Amen. You just, you wonder why I love being your pastor? <laughs> Look at the stuff that you guys do. You're amazing. Gentlemen, would you help us, please? Pastor A, would you pray? Let's all stand up and stretch our hands to our tithe, our seed, our vows, and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the honor and opportunity tonight, Lord, that we get to come and be in your presence, to return to you that which belongs to you, the seed we are sowing, the vows we are fulfilling, Lord God. 
And Lord, we thank you for your word, which is helping us and teaching us, Lord God, about how you restore and how we need to live our lives, Lord God, to see the restoration of fortunes come. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the outpouring of your spirit. And Lord, we thank you for the good news that we are constantly hearing, Lord God, to build up our faith and encourage us for our testimony that is to come. Lord, we return these things to you now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's head back to main campus for this week at COP. This week at COP, we rejoice with COP Alongapo for 45 saved as they conducted their online trio crusade called the Power of the Cross. This week at COP, worship leaders training with Pastora Babes continued for our COP branches in Batangas, Bataan, Cebu, Davao, Luwag, Lipa, and Alongapo. This week at COP, East Campus is alive with evangelism as their trio crusades continue. District 15 leaders praise God for 146 saved in their Zoom trio outreaches, followed by First Truths. Some of these new believers already attended their first go group and some have been water baptized. This week at COP East Campus, our legal advocates praise God for 16 saved as they shared the Lord with their fellow lawyers and law students. This week at COP, we praise God with the mighty men in uniform for 466 souls saved from the various military bases and police stations. Saved were soldiers from Navy, Marines, Air Force, policemen, and people deprived of liberty. Truly, the gospel is not chained. This week at COP! Woo! This week at COP Dubai, we praise God for more new believers who followed the Lord in water baptism. These new believers are already attending Go groups and even levels online. This week at COP, let's praise God for the harvest of our members. The Jimenez family from South Campus dedicated this lovely home to the Lord. Rosemary Gonzalez from South started her mini grocery at the beginning of the pandemic with capital of 3,500 pesos. Now her mini grocery has an inventory worth 77,000. Praise God! Edgar and Joe Berlin Ignacio dedicated their apartment for their rental business, also from South Campus. Also from South, the Paz family dedicated their new car. From North, the De Jesus family praises God for their new Vios. Also from North, the Quijano family dedicated their new van, an Isuzu Travis. During the dedication, three family members accepted the Lord as Savior. Finally, from North, the Salvador family praises God for the dedication of their new business, started online during the pandemic, but now branching out. It has been another great week at COP. It is so good to see God's blessings on your life. Amen? Remember, I just came out of the drive-in service with horns honking at me all morning. All right, would you open your Bibles, please, again, back to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6. I won't do a long review, but let us remember together that we've been learning how to put on the full armor of God. God wants us to be able in these evil days, in these days that are called seasons of darkness, that we have to learn to take a stand, and having done everything to stand, we stand firm. Part of doing that is putting on the full armor of God, putting on God's armor, and we've taken each piece of that armor one by one. Now, most of that armor is different from these last two. These last two, God changes the word that's used a little bit. When he says, take up the shield of faith, the Greek word literally means to pick up and carry with you. But when it comes to the helmet of salvation, which is the assurance of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema or the word of God, he says, dekomai. He says, receive or accept through all kinds of prayer and praying in the Holy Ghost. So we're learning that <laughs> if you don't learn anything else, pray more in Jesus' name. Everybody say, pray more. That assurance of salvation flows to us in a season of prayer. This rhema, God speaking specific words to our life, flow to us in a season of prayer. 
Now, don't get all stumbled by this concept of rhema and don't think that it's a weird thing. There's two different Greek words in the Bible that are used for word, the word of God. One is logos and one is rhema. Logos is like the general word of God. Everybody say the general word of God. And rhema is like a specific applied spoken word to you. It is as if logos would be the beautiful uh, well of water. That's the logos. The rhema is not different than the logos. The rhema is simply like God takes a glass of water from the, from the logos and serves it to you. This is why I've said the rhema is not different in its interpretation than the logos. It means the same whether it's rhema or, or it's logos. The meaning does not change. The meaning is not distorted. It means the same whether it's logos or whether it's rhema. But there are times in our life when God takes a passage of Scripture, when God takes a truth and burns it into our hearts, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the rhema of God. Everybody say, it grows faith. Now, last week we closed out learning how to respond biblically to the rhema. When, when God begins to speak rhema to our lives, how do we respond? When the sword of the Spirit is given to our lives, everybody say, given to my life. When God places in our hand, we receive that sword of the Spirit. How do we respond? Well, first of all, we need to understand that a biblical attitude is necessary. And the first thing I would say about that biblical attitude is the source of the rhema should not affect our heart toward the rhema. Everybody say, the source. Now, there's many sources of the rhema coming to our lives. It may be through prayer. Ephesians 6, verse 17 and 18, Young's translation lays out the Greek very well. And the helmet of salvation receive, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the saying or the rhema of God, through all prayer and supplication, praying at all times in the Spirit. He says, all right, whether it comes in prayer, you're, you're sitting down in your devotions one morning, praying and reading your Bible, and all of a sudden God takes a passage and, and speaks it to your life, and, and faith begins to burst within your life for a certain situation. You've read all of your life that passage, by his stripes I have been healed. But one morning God just takes it and burns that thing in your heart, and all of a sudden you have faith for a healing. You have faith for a miracle. Everybody say, through prayer. Sometimes Jesus speaks it to us. Everybody say, Jesus is alive. He's never changed. In Matthew 26, verse 75, and Peter remembered the saying, the rhema, the rhema of Jesus. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Now, we'll get more into this next week, Lord willing. But I want you to notice that Jesus spoke a word, spoke a rhema to Peter. And that rhema spoken to Peter in a season of darkness, that rhema spoken to Peter in one of the hardest times of his life when he's about to deny Christ is what sustained him. Everybody say sustained him. Now there are times when you're, you're, God will wake you up in the middle of the night and it's like Jesus is sitting there. You can't see him, but it's like Jesus is there in the room with you and he just speaks a word to your life. Now, whether it's through prayer or whether it's Jesus speaking something to your life or, or maybe it's a pastor. Remember, pastors are to preach the rhema. We are not just to preach the logos. We are not just to preach, you know, okay, this is what the Bible says, like, like, like some dead theology. No, when we preach, we're to preach the rhema. Everybody say, fresh. What does the congregation need to hear from God? This is why I don't believe in copying sermons off of, of great God Google. You, you wait before God and you get a fresh word from God. This is what the Spirit is saying to the church. This is what Jesus is speaking to the church today. The apostles were told in Acts 5 verse 20, go and stand in the temple courts and speak to the people all the words, all the rhema of this life. He said, don't, don't, go, go, don't go teach all that dead theology of Judaism that they've heard all their life. Teach them the rhema of this life. Acts 10, verse 22. And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by the holy angel to send for you to come to his house and hear what you have to say. And hear your rhema. The Greek word there for say is rhema. Cornelius did not want to hear more Judaistic philosophy. 
Cornelius wanted to hear the rhema of God. What is that fresh word that God has given you for my family? What is it that God has given you? God sent me to hear, to send for you because you had a rhema for my family. Preachers are to preach the rhema. 1 Peter 1 verse 25, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word, this rhema, is the good news that was preached to you. Now all of that just to say this, whether you're sitting in a service and the Holy Spirit takes a passage of scripture and burns it into your heart and mind, whether you're sitting in your devotions, reading the Bible and praying one morning, or whether Jesus walks physically into your bedroom at night and speaks a word to you. That scripture, that rhema, you treat the same. Everybody say, if it's rhema, it's rhema. And as I closed out last week, I taught you, you don't treat that rhema, whatever the source, as if it's the words of men. It's not idle talk. Luke 24, verse 11, I'll go through this quickly because we taught it last week. But these words, these rhema, seem to them as an idle tale, and they did not believe them. There are times that God will take a passage of Scripture in the middle of your darkest hour, and He'll speak something that will explode faith within you for a miracle, that will explode faith within you for an answered prayer. And, and you can't look upon it and say, eh, this seems too good to be true. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Folks, God doesn't just talk. When God speaks, when God speaks a rhema to you, He has a purpose in it. Never treat it as if it's idle words. Never treat it as if it's the words of men. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. We also thank God constantly in this. That when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the words of men, but as it, what it really is. The word of God which is at work in you believers. Everybody say, the word's working in me. But it can't work in you if you receive it as the words of men. Whether it's reading your Bible one morning in prayer, whether it's Jesus speaking to you, whether it's a pastor teaching you fresh words from God, you, you, you cannot treat it as the words of men. You have to treat it as if it's God speaking to me. Everybody say, God talking to me. And then you treasure those words. Now, I'm going to get into this passage more later, but I want you to notice Mary. After the shepherds came and told her the rhema that they had heard. Everybody say, the rhema? they had been told. After those, after those men came and told Mary the rhema that they had been told out in the fields that night, it says Mary treasured up these things, pondering them in her heart. When God speaks a rhema to you, treasure it for the rest of your life. Now we'll talk more about this remembering in long-term situation in a few minutes, but I just want you to get right now, treasure it. Everybody say, treasure it. Say it again. When God spoke to Daniel, the battle, King David, the battle is the Lord's. David treasured that, and David lived with that rhema for the rest of his life. At some point, you have to have an attitude that, that God has spoken something to me, and I will treasure it. Everybody say, I will treasure this. Now, there are people that do not respond properly to the rhema. Some of these people are unsaved people. John chapter 12, verse 47, Jesus said, If anyone hears my words, my rhema, and does not keep them, I don't judge him, for I do not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my rhema has a judge. Now notice, there are people that when they hear the rhema of the gospel, they reject it. But they're not just rejecting the, the word that Jesus spoke to them, they're rejecting Jesus. Everybody say, the Word and Jesus. There are believers that respond very badly to the rhema. This week in morning devotions, I read you from Hebrews chapter 6, one of the scariest passages of the Bible. Paul said in verse 4, For it is impossible, in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the rhema of God and the powers of the age to come. Now, just stop there for a minute. I know this pe people don't like this because it doesn't agree with Baptist theology, 
Baptists teach that if you ever come down to an altar and pray a prayer, once saved, always saved. But Paul here is very clearly teaching that that is not true. He said there are people who have been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift. Everybody say salvation. And his word here for taste means a personal experience. Just like I'm always trying to get Sister Bev to try spicy food. And I say, sweetheart, try this. This is hot Indian food. No. Try this. This has slap your mama in it. It's, it's a Cajun spice I like. No. She will never taste it. She has no clue what spicy food tastes like. She's always trying to get me. She makes this soup out of beets. She's always trying to get me to eat these, this beet soup. I don't Even my dog won't eat that. But she loves it. She's always trying to get me to taste it. I don't want to taste it. Now, I have no experience with that beet soup. And she has no experience with spicy food. You have to taste it to experience it. You have to what? Now, notice, they tasted the heavenly gift. They tasted salvation. They had first-hand experience in salvation. And they've shared in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been poured out on these people. And they've tasted the goodness of the rhema. When God speaks his word to you, it's good. It's what? It's a good thing. And they've tasted of that goodness of the rhema. They've encountered the reality of God. They've been touched by the, a relationship with God. They've, they've heard God speak things into their lives. And they've tasted of the powers of the age to come. They've seen miracles. He said, now when these people fall away, it's impossible to bring them back. You say, well, pastor, maybe that, that's me. Maybe that's my son. Listen, if you're still concerned about your spiritual life, it's not you. Everybody say, you're not included. These are people that had everything. And I think this is a lot harder than people like to make it. I don't, I don't think this is just a, you get up one day and turn away from God. I think it's a lot harder to get away from God than people like to make it. But there are people that just say, I don't want anything more to do with God. They know God's real. They've experienced salvation. They've heard the voice of God speaking in their hearts, the rhema of God. They've encountered the Holy Spirit. They, they, they've They've seen miracles, real, genuine miracles. And one day, there are people that just walk away. That's a bad response. He said, it's impossible. You ought to make a list in your Bibles one day of all the things that God says are impossible. It's impossible to bring these people back to a place of repentance. But I just want you to see here, because I didn't want you to get confused by the passage, so I wanted to spend a few minutes on it. I want you to notice that when God speaks the rhema to us, it's good. Everybody say, it's good. Say it again. There are some who refuse to hear the rhema. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning with verse 18. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and a sound of a trumpet and a voice of words, rhema. Everybody say, rhema. And a voice whose words, rhema, made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. Now, Paul is talking about that day at Mount Sinai when the people of Israel told Moses, we don't want to hear God's voice anymore. You go hear God's voice and tell us what he said. I call that the saddest day in Israel's history. God offered every person in Israel a personal relationship with God. Every person. God wanted to speak to everybody. But they didn't want to hear the rhema. They did not want God to speak to their lives. They said, Moses, you go talk to God. We don't want to hear this anymore. Now, folks, that is a very bad response. There are some people that don't understand the rhema. We're just going through wrong responses here very quickly. There are some people who don't understand the rhema, and they don't want to learn. Mark chapter 9, beginning with verse 30. These are the apostles. And they went on from there and passed through the Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, 
The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the same. The Greek word there is rhema. They did not understand the rhema and were afraid to ask him. Now, why were they afraid to ask him? Look on down at the next verse. When they came to Capernaum, when he was in the house, he asked them, um, what were you discussing along the way? Why is it that you did not want to engage and learn? I was trying to teach you rhema, and you did not want to engage and learn. What, what, were, you, what were you so busy discussing? But they kept silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. Wow. Pride. In their prideful conversation, they weren't listening to the rhema of Jesus. And they were afraid to ask because then they'd have to explain why they weren't listening. Beloved, these are all wrong responses to the rhema. When God begins to speak to us, if we've been distracted by something else, even by pride, you humble yourself and you ask, Lord, what was it you said? What, what is it that you're trying to say to me, Lord? You never you never treat the rhema like idle words, as we taught you earlier. All right, now I've wanted to go through those quickly. Everybody say wrong responses. Now let's talk about proper responses. Whether it's through prayer, whether it's through a preacher, whether it's Jesus standing in front of us talking, we must learn to understand that the rhema is always spoken for a purpose. Everybody say, God has a purpose. In Luke chapter 3, beginning with verse, oh, verse 2. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word, the rhema of God, came to John, the son of Zebedee, in the wilderness. And John began to preach. Now, straight talk, folks. The rhema came to John, and he began his ministry. Some of you, during this COVID-19 thing, God has spoken to. In your Bibles, reading in your Bibles one morning in prayer, God began to speak to you. God began to take a scripture that you studied in the past and burn it in your heart. And you know that you know that you know that you're called. Now, John didn't say, well, now, God, you know, I know you spoke this rhema to me, and, and, you know, let's work on this in a few months. Let's work on this next year. No. When God speaks a rhema to you, he speaks it to you for a purpose. Everybody say, time to get started. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the rhema. He's trying to put faith in your heart to do something. You look at John's father, Zechariah, Luke chapter 1, verse 13. And the angel said to him, Don't be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. God spoke to his father for a reason. God spoke to John for a reason. God speaks to you for a reason. Respond. Everybody shout, respond. Say it again. Don't just, oh, that was a nice thing that God said. That, that's treating it like an idle word. When God speaks something to you, respond. All right, this is to create faith in my life to do something, to receive something. Now, how do I act on this? Respond to God. Secondly, we must submit to the rhema when God speaks it to our lives. Luke chapter 1, verse 38, we sing it as a song. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your rhema. According to your what? Very submissive heart. God spoke rhema to her heart, and she said, May it be to me according to your rhema. God speaks some scriptures on healing. Submit to it. May it be to me as you have spoken. I receive my healing in Jesus' name. 
God speaks words of prosperity that your needs will be met according to all his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Respond and say, may it be to me according to your word. I thank you that all my bills are paid, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that all of my needs are met. Respond. Everybody say, respond. Say it again. Respond with a submissive heart. When God speaks the rhema to you, respond with a submissive heart. Respond with expectation. Luke, 21, or excuse me, Luke 2, verse 15, I told you we'd come back to these guys who talked to Mary. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing, this rhema that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us expectation. God said that the Messiah was just born over here. God spoke Raymond to us. Let's go check it out. Everybody say, let's go check it out. Say it again. So we respond. We respond in submission. We respond in expectation. Let me give you another illustration of expectation. Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and he was a, this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took up the child in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord... Now you have let your servant depart in peace according to your rhema. According to your what? Rhema. Now look at how this man lived a life of expectation. God spoke a rhema to him that he would see the Messiah. Now that, was, that man lived a very interesting life after that because the temple courts are a huge, huge area. But as you begin to study the times of Jesus, you realize that there were places that different groups would meet in the temple courts. There was a group, an area where the righteous gathered. Everybody say the righteous. These weren't the politicians. These weren't the corrupt. These weren't the sinful Sanhedrin. These were good people that loved God. Everybody say the righteous. And when it came time for Joseph and Mary to have their child, what we would call dedicated, to have Jesus dedicated, they didn't go to the Holy of Holies. They didn't go to the Sanhedrin court. They went to the place where the righteous gathered, where they found Anna, a true prophetess of God, where Simeon hung out. This is where the righteous hung out. So here's this guy. God spoke a rhema to him, and he knew, I'm not going to find Messiah in the holy place. I'm not going to find Messiah in the, the, the courtyard of the Sanhedrin. I'm not going to find Messiah in front of the treasury. I'm not going to find Messiah among the politicians. I'm going to find Messiah among the righteous. And he said, you know what? God, you spoke that to me, and now I can depart in peace because you fulfilled the rhema in my life. Everybody say, expectation. Are you learning? Can I, hello? Can I teach you some more? We have to remember that the rhema is not time bound. When God speaks a rhema to your life, it does not have an expiry date. Acts chapter 1, I'm sorry, Acts 11 beginning with verse 15. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as he had on us at the beginning. Peter is explaining to the Jews about the Gentile salvation. Now listen to what Peter says in verse 16. And I remembered the word, I remembered the rhema of the Lord. I remembered the, the rhema of the Lord. How he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I should stand in the Lord's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, 
the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. Luke chapter 24, verse 8, and they remembered his words. They remembered his rhema. Everybody say, remember the rhema. There was a time in my life when I knew that God healed, but I really didn't believe much in healing. When I left Bible college, I'd been taught all the reasons why God did not heal. But nobody had ever taught me about that God did heal. I saw it in the scripture, but I didn't have any faith for it. And I can remember as your pastor, 23 years old, kneeling with my little red pillow that I kept for years in front of that little white couch with all the holes in it, and I would just sit there and read my Bible. And just sit there and read my Bible and study and say, Jesus, I, I got to remember, folks, in those days we were poor. Nobody had money for doctors. Nobody had money for hospitals. And I said, Jesus, how can I help people? I, I, I don't know how to see anybody get healed, but, but I see it in the Scripture, and I would cry out to God. And one morning, I'll never forget, I'm down there kneeling next to the couch, praying and reading my Bible, and all of a sudden faith began to flow in my heart. All of a sudden, God just took scriptures and just boom! All of a sudden, faith came by hearing the rhema. Now, there, there was no expiry date on that. I've, re re I've remembered it until this day. I remember during the revival days, right here, God began to just download all the verses on light into me. And I began to have this whole understanding of the light of God. And to this day, I remember that. When God speaks a rhema to you, that will leave faith in your life for a lifetime. Everybody say, for a lifetime. Just like King David, the battle is the Lord's. He walked in that rhema. He walked in that revelation for the rest of his life. Now, for some of you, God is going to speak something into your life. He's going to take a glass of water from that logos. And he's going to quicken scriptures to your life. And there's going to be faith for things. Faith for your business. Faith for your profession. Faith for your family. There's going to be faith that has come into your life. And you just have to remember the rhema. Everybody say, remember the rhema. This is why I tell you, sometimes you need to write down things that God has spoken to you. Because for the rest of your life, those things are going to stay there. You need to remember the words he spoke to you. Everybody say, remember. Too many Christians think, well, God just gave me a word to get me through this situation. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's going to get you through that situation and every other situation for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. Sometimes we need to um, pass the rhema on. Luke 2, 17. And when they saw it, they made known the saying, the rhema that had been told them concerning this child. Again, referring to the shepherds in the field. They passed it on. When God has birthed faith in you for something, you pass it on. Everybody say, share it with others. Say it again. You sit down in your connect group and you say, you know, God just spoke this word. God just took this scripture and made it alive in me. And, and oh my goodness, this, this thing is burning within me. You share it. Everybody say, pass it on. But one last thing I want you to see here. John 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words, my rhema abides in you, ask what you wish and it will be done. There are two things I want you to see in that verse. The rhema needs to abide in you. Everybody say, remain in me. You need to hold. When God speaks rhema into your heart, you need to hold on to that rhema. Please don't forget the parable of the sower and the seed. Satan wants to steal the word out of your heart. Don't, don't forget that parable of the sower and the seed. Persecution wants to destroy that, that word that God spoke to your heart. Please don't forget the parable of the sower and the seed. Deceitfulness of riches, the worries of this life want to choke that word out of your life. This, this is one of the saddest things I've seen as a pastor. I watch people come up out of poverty, and I watch God bless them, and I watch God prosper them, 
and then I watch them change. You say, what? Well, yeah, I watch them change. The deceitfulness of riches. And it chokes the rhema out of their life. Rhema that they used to have that, that birthed faith in them for miracles and for finances and for growth in their businesses. And, and all of a sudden, one day, ooh, they're, they're living in total failure again. The worries of this life, the deceitfulness of riches choke it out of your life. You, have to re, you just have to decide. This rhema that God has spoken to me is going to be a part of who I am until I go to heaven in Jesus' name. Everybody say, hold on to it. He said, if this thing abides in you, if you can hold on to the rhema, ask what you will and it shall be done for you. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the rhema. But you've got to hold that rhema in your heart. And when you've got that rhema and you're holding it in your heart, ask what you will and it shall be done for you. Now, now that just brings us full circle. The rhema comes into our life. We receive it through prayer and it causes answered prayer. Would you stand with me, please? I threw a lot at you tonight. And I did preach longer. Hallelujah. Now, we're not going to be getting back into two-hour services yet. Don't worry. <laughs> but I could go a lot longer on this sermon. Go back and meditate on these things. Go back and let these things stick within your heart. It is a very precious thing to sit there with your Bible in prayer in your devotions. And the God of the universe notices you and speaks a passage of Scripture to your heart. It is a precious thing. Submit to it. Live in expectation of it. Remember it. Hold on to it. In Jesus' name. I, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. There are passages that God spoke to Sister Bev and I 40 years ago as we were just starting to be your pastor. And we still remember and hold on to those things today. Never turn, when God speaks something to you, brothers and sisters, it's precious. Now, it's not weird. It doesn't disagree with the scripture saying context. People say, God spoke to me. I said, show it to me in the book. Well, it's not in the Bible. Then God didn't speak it. <clears throat> I'm, I'm a Bible person. The rhema comes from the logos. Everybody say, the rhema comes from the logos. Remember, Jesus is the logos and he speaks the rhema. Keep all of that theology straight and you won't get weird but hold on to what God speaks to you. Hold your hands together. Now, beloved, in these days of lockdown, God has spoken some things to you. God has taken some promises from the Scripture and made them alive in you. Don't let the worries of this COVID-19 life choke that out of your life. Those promises will be as real now and 10 years from now. Move forward with what God is speaking to your life. Father, I lift to you your people. Father, we, <laughs> faithful are you who has promised. You don't say anything, Lord, just to talk. When you speak, you speak for a reason. You encourage your people. You lift your people. You grow faith in your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, let them see the reality. Let them see your reality. Let them see the miracles. Let them see the situations turn around. In Jesus' name, amen. Campus pastors, would you come?
Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much, O oh God, because your word is alive, O oh God, and you are speaking to us, O oh God. Lord, thank you that every time you speak to us, O oh God, there is always a purpose. And God, we ask in Jesus' name that you will allow us, O oh God, to really take hold of this word, O oh God, that it will be with us, O oh God, for the rest of our lives, O oh God. It's going to change us, O oh God. And Father, we ask in Jesus' name that we will continue, continue to abide in your word, O oh God. And Lord, you promise as we remain in your word, O oh God. We thank you so much, O oh God, that we can ask anything, Lord, from you, God, and you're going to give it to us. You're going to give us success, oh God, even during these times, oh God. We will see your faithfulness, oh God, in our lives, that we will not just survive, but we will thrive during this pandemic because, Lord, your word is alive, working in us and speaking to us, oh God. Lord, we pray for your people today. We ask, oh God, for your protection to be upon every one of us, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for those who are commuting, especially you're going to give them a quick, easy ride home. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, everyone, and see you again next weekend.